What's up, folks? Grumus here, and we are back talking about the build for what I'm calling now the Canopy 12 UV. And this is the light that's the focus of the giveaway that goes down tonight. It's going down tonight, January 20th, 2017. So if you're watching this video and it's not January 2017, yes, you missed the giveaway. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, there'll be a new giveaway. I don't know, 20,000 subs. But this time, I think I'll build the thing before I announce the giveaway. So we've got a couple panels. We've got a few parts that we've talked about. So let's get into some more of the specifics about the build in case you want to do a build like this. Before we talk about parts, I do want to address one thing real quick. You know, I got a little bit of pushback about the way I chose to do this giveaway. I had to do it like this, guys. I did it to protect you. A bunch of scammers came through, searched the term giveaway on YouTube, and entered from a bunch of different IPs all over the world. And this website caught it, man. It, it bumped them into a folder for me to either validate or invalidate. And I invalidated a lot of bogus entries that would have completely crushed your chances. You, a cannabis grower, someone that's involved in the community, um, you know, could have lost to somebody that, that's some scammer. So that's why I did it this way. I know it wasn't as easy as entering a number. And I appreciate your patience for that. Um, but it, it was all just to protect you. So on with the light. All right, let's, let's talk about the parts a little bit to pull off a build like this. So you're going to need some aluminum. I used three foot by six foot, uh, 5053 aluminum. It cost me about 50 bucks, and then it was about $84 to water jet it myself, not including any uh, design time for the files or whatever. Uh, pin heat sinks all came from Northern Grey Lights, man. That, that's the spot. They got the great geometry, great prices, etc. So at the corners, we got their big monster SSTXs, and then um, they're actually 105 millimeter are the remaining eight. Uh, the UV bulb was from HTG Supply. It's the best UVB bulb on the market. The reptile bulbs just, they don't even hold a candle to this bulb, so I wouldn't waste your time with them. Uh, just get the HTG Supply bulb and you'll be happy. The chips, Northern Grow Lights as well. We got the Citizen 048s and the 058s, which are both 50 volts. So you got to kind of get out of that Cree 36 volt mindset and learn how to do some simple calculations using you know voltage and current uh, for these Citizens. Um, the far red chips came from Rapid. The um, the two blue bulbs, I wanted some blue, but I couldn't get them in a Citizen. So they are Cree CXB 3590s, um, 6500K. Uh, all the reflector components, you know, the uh, reflector adapters, the holders, the thermal interface material, all that stuff came from Northern Grow Lights. Um, they, they usually stock all that stuff for their chips to make it a little easier uh, and dummy proof when you're ordering components. Um, the drivers. So there's quite a few little drivers in here. Uh, the main drivers are all eight are Meanwell HLG 240 means 240 watts ish. Uh, at the corners, the big chips are going to be run at 2.1 amps or 2100 milliamps. Um, these I, I special ordered through Rapid. They didn't stock uh, exactly this stuff, so you know they hooked it up. Uh, they're a Meanwell distributor, so they're able to just punch me in on an order. Um, so we got some 240, 2100s, and a 700 milliamp driver. For the remaining citizens, the CXB 3590s will be run on the Rapid 4-Up board, which of course came from Rapid LED. Um, I've got a storm controller from Rapid LED. I've got a Meanwell 12-volt power supply, as well as a small driver for the Far Reds. That came from OnlineComponents.com, which has a lot of oddball stuff. Um, I got a couple relays and some switches and components. I get all that stuff from Amazon just because it's so fast and easy to get the little parts I need. And finally, paint, carbon fiber, resin, hardware, wire, all that stuff. I just put lumped in as 100 even though it was probably way more. Grand total, $1,353 worth of parts. Wiring, about six hours. Carbon fiber rim took me about eight hours total. Um, water jetting, assembly, paint, all that stuff. I probably have 30 hours in the build, and that's why I don't do a lot of builds like this for other people, because I'd have to charge a thousand bucks worth of labor, making this a $2,300 light if I were to build it for somebody, which uh, I'm not really willing to, because this light was a pain in the ass to build. Okay, now let's get on with some action. Okay, so the idea for this build was to take these two pieces of metal and sandwich them between some aluminum. Um, this is C-shaped aluminum, or I think they call it C-channel. Uh, you can check it out on like online metals or something like that.com. And this is inch and a quarter all the way around C-channel. And it, it would have worked great for the reflectors, which are inch and a half deep, and it would have just been perfect. But I, it would have been a simple build. I could have either TIG welded the corners or used some kind of L brackets and riveted or bolted it together. And the job would have been done in like an hour. But I just wanted to be way way more cool or, or 
you know so i thought like let's do carbon fiber i've never seen that in a grow light and that sent me down a journey of building a wooden frame and doing a carbon fiber layup so i started out by taking some red oak strips that i just got from lowe's just kind of standard oak and i chose oak because it's uh, its density its porosity would make it easier to paint and delaminate the carbon fiber so this is just a one-time mold that'll be used and destroyed in the frame making process to make it removable, I use this uh, thing called a Craig jig. It's like a pocket jig for screws. You've probably seen it on, on furniture, and it, it allows me to have access to all the screws to take them all out and uh, remove the mold from the carbon fiber once it's done. And this wood will be basically painted and sealed so that the carbon fiber doesn't stick to the rim. So I got the frame perfectly square and then went ahead and painted it. And I just use regular white high gloss spray paint from Lowe's, uh, just paint it with a couple nice coats then wet dried down the bumpy spots and then hit it again for a nice like silky smooth type of finish uh, the next step is just to wax it down with some uh, mold release wax and then spray it with something special called PLA PLA is is a water soluble mold release agent and you spray it or I spray it using one of these little preval sprayers you can buy at Lowe's are about I don't know seven to twelve dollars and it allows you to take pretty much any liquid and turn it into an aerosol spray can. So uh, I pour the mold release agent here, spray it, and it creates basically like a, a plastic film that's removable. So when you delaminate the carbon fiber from the mold, it all comes off nice and easy. So to start out with the layup, I'm gonna begin with this two by two twill weave carbon fi fiber, and uh, I'm just gonna lay it out and uh, cut it into some strips. And the strips will basically be laminated or uh, laid up on the frame, and we'll just keep laying up layers. For the first layer of the frame, I'm just using a 3M Super 77 spray adhesive just to make it a lot easier to stick this carbon fiber, this first layer, to the mold and you know cover the shapes and the contours and all this stuff. Now, this carbon fiber composite is probably taking up way too much of this video already, and it is a whole process that you know is going to take a lot longer than just watching this video. So. After many hours and many days of drying and sanding and more coats, et cetera, et cetera, I finally got this frame done. And I'm pretty happy with the consistency of the weave and, and the way it demolded. Doing this thing out of carbon fiber was less about the weight and more about just being different and being innovative and being cool. And for whoever wins this light, they can, they can say they're the only people that have like a carbon fiber grow light. And uh, even though it's a small component of the build, I think it adds a lot. And uh, I think it was well worth the time and the experience to, to do this. Now, the next step in the build is pretty simple. Just mounting the, uh, the top plate onto the frame itself. I was, I was very happy with the rigidity of the frame, but I went ahead and added just a little bit of black silicone or RTV um, between the top plate that holds the heat sinks and the carbon fiber frame. So let's mount some component. I've talked about the specifics of mounting components in my DIY basics series, but uh, the, the basics are just the same, you know, just clean everything off with rubbing alcohol first, apply your thermal interface to each chip. I, I really like the graphite pads now, you know, because they're just mess free and they're easy. And if you if you make a mistake, like a polarity mistake, you can pull it off without having to clean off the, uh, the thermal interface, um, you know, glue or gel or whatever. So uh, just get everything mounted and get it ready to mount these babies up onto the top frame. People ask me what I think about the citizenships all the time, and I really have no business uh, advising you one way or the other if I haven't grown plants under it. And I haven't grown plants under the under the citizens. The calculations look good, and they pull ahead of the Cree at the high drive currents based on some calculations. But we're finding out that a lot of our forum calculations aren't agreeing with integrating sphere data. So who knows? I'll flower under them. But for now, um, whoever wins this light is going to be one of the first people I've seen. Now, I'm doing a test fit here of the front cover, and I'm realizing that uh, we have a problem. There's a gap. I had measured inch and a quarter for the thickness of the frame, and I built it an inch and a half. So to fill this gap, I'm going to have to cut some, basically some plastic rings or Lexan rings um, to fill in this gap so we don't lose light behind the fixture. So for the reflector extenders, I'm, I'm using this Trotec laser engraver. It's about a $20,000, $25,000 machine, and it's good at a lot of things. Um, unfortunately, it's not powerful enough to cut metal, or my life would be a lot easier. Um, so it's going to cut out some little rings out of a, uh, a high heat polycarbonate material, and uh, we'll extend the reflectors to fill that gap. 
Now, a lot of people ask me, like, how do you have access to all these tools and stuff? Um, I'm a guy just like you with a messy garage full of crappy Harbor Freight tools, but um, I dropped my Gold's Gym membership and picked up a membership to a makerspace about a year ago. And you can too. You know, uh, Google your area, like Pittsburgh Makerspace, Los Angeles Makerspace, wherever you are, chances are there's going to be a makerspace in your area. And they're about $60 a month up to $100 a month for a membership, depending on the company. And it grants you access to all of these tools once you take a little class on it. So uh, for the last year, I've been taking classes on CAD, CAM, lasers, CNC, water jet. And that's what allows me to do these, you know, kind of clean cuts and, and stuff like this. So I definitely recommend it to anybody. It's a, it's a journey you can go down and it, it's a lot of fun. It might, hell, it might open you up to designing that prototype that you always wanted to design, but never had 40 or $50,000 to hire an industrial design company. So laser engraver going to town. And at this time I decided to do some decorative elements. Um, I don't know if they're going to be to everybody's taste, so I'm making them basically removable. But uh, I'm cutting out some rings that you probably saw on Instagram, and you'll see here um, probably in the next video. Um, with the rings cut, I'm using a product called Weld On Number no. 4. It's uh, it's not a glue. It's a solvent-based, um, I don't even want to use the term adhesive, but it's a solvent that melts plastic together. So essentially, I'm placing these little Angelina 90 degree reflectors in contact with the reflector extenders and basically chemically welding them together and they are on there stuck forever. Using the laser, I cut a switch plate as well that I ended up not being happy with that I'll cover in the next video. And I cut these red rings, which I am kind of happy with. They're kind of cool, but the big red plastic panel in the middle, I felt like it really cheapened the light. You know, it just it was cool, you know, to cover the UV and, and to cover that, that access hole, but it was just kind of missing something. So I decided to fiddle with it the night before I launched the giveaway. I thought it'd be cool to back laminate the center panel so that the letters would have carbon fiber and I would cut out this center section. And it was looking really cool. And then when I did the layup, I realized that I had used translucent plastic. So any air bubbles were gonna show through. So I went ahead and vacuum bagged it, not shown here, and was like, okay, dope. Like no air bubbles, it looks cool. I'll cut this thing out and we'll have that carbon fiber element pulled into the front side of the panel. All good. But when I went to release the you know mold from this mirror, I did the layup on a mirror, um, the whole thing basically just fell apart on me. I had sanded the back of this thing so that the resin would adhere to you know the acrylic but uh, I started getting a lot of delamination at the corners so you could see it through and then it started bowing up on me and it just looked like absolute dog shit. So back to the drawing board on this one, I'll come up with something and I'll release that what the final cover panel will look like in the final video. Uh, but for the next video, we're going to get into actually wiring this thing. So sit tight, I'm producing these videos back to back. I wanted the wiring video to be its own standalone video, not bogged down with carbon fiber and other stuff you might not care about. So everything's fitting pretty well. I'm happy with the, the outer case and we'll get into the wiring on the very next video. And I'll show you some things that you might not have seen before. So stay tuned, subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. And I'll be right back for the wiring video.